what's up YouTube this is Dan the fix it man I've got another quick video here for you I'm gonna show you how to change your rear brake pads on a 2007 Honda Accord now the first thing we need to do is take out these caliper pin bolts this is a 12 millimeter socket sometimes you can break it loose sometimes the actual slide pin here will spin and you may need to put a 17 millimeter open end wrench to keep that from turning while you loosen and remove these that one didn't really spin, but let's see if we can do the top one here too. See, that's just turning, so I'm going to go ahead and put my 17 millimeter open end wrench on here and break that loose. That's what that looks like. Set that aside. Now you should be able just to pull the caliper off. This is still connected to the parking brake and all of the linkage down there, but if you just pull on this, just a little bit of wiggling back and forth and just kind of set that down off to the side for right now. And then we can just, just pull out the old pads. These are worn down pretty good. This one's kind of wedged in here. That's no good. And you can see that this little indicator was rubbing, uh, letting you know that it's time to change these, getting uh, close to being metal to metal, but. We're also gonna pull out these little clips here, little retainer clips that the, uh, that the pads slide on. And then we're also gonna pull out these slide pins. This one feels kind of dry and dirty. So yeah, these slide pins are actually really dirty. I'm gonna take them and, uh, and uh, hit them with some brake cleaner and some wire brush. See if I can't clean this. This looks like a little bit of corrosion. Probably had some of the wrong kind of grease in here or something, but it, it's really pitted and gummed up. We'll see what we can't do to clean that. All right, well, that's not perfect, but they're uh, cleaner than they were. And this little rubber boot, you see this little edge right here? That fits inside of the caliper. So we'll just kind of push on that and press that in. Same with the top one. Just kind of got to start one side and then force it in. And then that'll stay in like that. And then we're going to hit these with the, uh, the sill glide. Make sure we get plenty of grease on there. Same with this bottom one. Again, this is pretty pitted, but I think we got it cleaned up enough. And I think the grease will keep it moving, doing the, what it's supposed to do. And then when you pop those in, sometimes I'll squeeze that boot just to make sure that we get all the air out of there. Because what you don't want is too much grease in there or any air in there and that will that will push this pin out and that'll create drag on the outside pad. Now it's a good idea to clean up this part of the, the caliper bracket here too. And I may have gotten a little bit of a little bit of that grease on the rotor, so it's a good idea to clean that off as well. We're not changing the rotor on this one. It doesn't look like it's in great shape, but uh, we're just going to stick with what we got here. And then we'll just just try to clean this up with a wire brush. Now we've got these new little pad retainers that sit right here. A lot of people have been asking me, you know, about where to put the grease. You know, in, in my area, I don't have as much rust, but I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little bit of grease on this. Um, that seems to be a problem in many parts of the world where rust is an issue. I usually would just put grease on the top of this where the pad rides and slides back and forth, but in this case, I'm gonna put a little bit under it as well. And then we can just snap these into place. And see, I'm just gonna put a little bit of grease on this I also usually will just put a little bit of grease on the edge of the pad. Make sure you don't get any on the rotor or on the pad material surface. But that's that's where the new pads will ride. As the brakes are applied, the pads can actually move back and forth right in there. Now one thing I've noticed with these, with these new clips, see this little part right here that hangs down? This uh, a lot of times will stick out and rub on the rotor. So a lot of times I'll put a, a screwdriver in there just to kind of bend that or make sure that it's fully seated in there and, and maybe even spin the rotor a few times and make sure that that's not rubbing on that metal edge. This kit did come with a few different 
choices on the hardware that actually had um, eight of these instead of just four or you know two on either side but it came with eight maybe another year they use a slightly different version and these are the uh, brake pads I got here the Wagner OEX um, part number OEX 537 and before I put these on I just like to put a little thin layer of that grease as well on the uh, backing plate or the back of the shim here there's a shim that's already on here so just press those into place one here with the uh, the little metal uh, part that sticks out that's the noisemaker or that's the squealer that's going to rub on the rotor when these wear down and that goes on the inside this little metal spring here that holds the pads down it sits inside the caliper uh, the kit comes with a new one also comes with a few choices so just make sure that you uh, compare the two and make sure that you're using the right one but we're going to replace that as well i'm going to push the caliper back in first before i change that okay now you can see this caliper piston see it's got this little x shape on the face uh, what we need to do is push that back in but you can't just pry this one back in this is this is actually threaded and there's a special tool that i've got and i'll show you here in a minute that will line up with this and it will it will turn this as it compresses it pushing it back inside now it's a good idea before you do this to pop the hood and take a look at the master cylinder fluid level make sure that when you push this back in that you're not going to overflow your brake fluid uh, and make a mess now this is the kit that i'm using you can see they come with lots of different styles and sizes m goes right here and then this is the uh the standard thread this also comes with a reverse thread some cars you need a reverse thread this has been a very handy tool. Uh, I waited many years before buying this. I wish I would have bought it sooner. It makes this job way easier. Trying to press that caliper piston back in without this tool is difficult to say the least. Uh, you know, I've tried the other little square tool that they sell at some of the local stores. It doesn't work very well and uh, I didn't have good success with that. So I, I went ahead and, and bought this. I'll put a link to this tool in the description. Uh, it's a lot less expensive than I ever thought it would be. I think right now it's only around $20 on Amazon. So here's how you use the tool. You just kind of, you pick the, pick the fitting or the, the plate like this that will line up in these grooves here. And then we just come over here, put it in, get it lined up, and then you're going to just thread this outward with your hand, the outside little sleeve here just like that to kind of lock it in place. With this linkage, it's not super easy to show this, but I'm hoping you can get a good visual here, but you're gonna see the piston turn in now. So as I as I turn this right here, and then you, you just kind of have to back this out as you go. You're spinning this. Turning this just keeps pressure for this little plate right here on the other part of the caliper. But you can see as it turns inward, pushing that caliper piston back in to make room for the new pads. Way faster than trying to do this with some channel locks or pliers or whatever. I've done it, <laughs> but uh, way easier with this guy here. So we'll just turn this all the way in, just like that. And that's it. And then the last spring here, which is this little hold down spring, we just kind of come in here, position this up in this little groove or slot. There we go. But once we have that in place, we can just bring the caliper over here. See, here's this little spring, and that actually applies pressure down on the pads. So you do kind of have to push down in order to get these bolts started. These are just the little caliper slide pin bolts. The torque spec for these back ones is 17 foot pounds. While you're tightening it, you may have to use an open end wrench on there. And that's pretty much everything. Just remember to torque everything to spec. Now before you drive off, just make sure you step on the brake pedal a few times just to press this caliper piston back out, pressing these pads up against the rotor where they need to be. 
Uh, when you do that, I recommend that you don't press the brake pedal all the way down to the floor. Um, that can damage the seals in the master cylinder, but just push it part way down a couple times, two or three times, or until that pedal feels firm. And that's how you know that this is pushed out all the way and you should be good to go. And don't forget to top off the master cylinder as well. Hope you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind. That does help me out. I'll put a link in the description where you can pick up some of these parts and tools as well. If you're looking to do the front brakes on this same vehicle, you can look for that video on my channel as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.